Camacho. My next guest tonight is an actress who just received an Oscar nomination for her leading role in Killers of the Flower Moon. Please welcome to the late show, Lily Gladstone. Please, please, thank you very much. I think, I think you might be the first guest to ever come on with their own train. That's really I have a nice. Valentine, I have a oh, Valentine. Oh, Valentine! Thank you. Happy Can I should I open it? Sure. Should I open it now? Yeah. This is lovely. I matched my, I matched myself to the card. I've got a long tail. Oh, very nice. Don't. <laughs> it says, "Be mine." Isn't that lovely? <laughs> Evie, you needn't watch this part. <laughs> oh, someone less intense than thank you for hosting me and Valentine's Day. This is so lovely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Happy on. Valentine's Day to you. Um, <laughs> and congratulations on your Oscar nomination. Thank what you. an extraordinary <laughs> It's 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 an amazing film. Scorsese keeps finding new vocabulary to tell stories. Ten nominations for this film. Best uh, actress for you. Um, first Native American woman to be nominated for an Oscar <laughs> in a lead role. <laughs> what was that? First of all, how did you find out about the nomination? What, do you get a call in the morning, like the Nobel Prize? How did you, where were I you? I mean, we, we learn like everybody else does by watching. So I was in Osage County on the Osage Reservation and FaceTiming with my parents. So I wanted to kind of, if it were to go the way that it did, have a, have a foot in both worlds, I guess. So I was on FaceTime with my mom and dad, and it was funny. My mom, you know, very naturally did the mom thing and had the camera up to the TV so I could see what they were seeing. But <laughs> couldn't really see, just, you know, like little like white lines of light with no definition. I'm like, mom, I can't, I can't tell what's going on. I want to see you and dad. So she held the phone out, kind of like, okay, and made sure we're, they were both in there. So she was holding the phone up when the, when the announcement came in, and I couldn't hear it, but I could tell by their reactions that, that I'd got You read it in their face. Yep, absolutely. That's extraordinary. Exactly how I wanted it. Now, uh, you could have read it someplace else, because your high school yearbook <laughs> in 2004, um, this is, photo has gone viral, uh, they called it 20 years ago, most likely to win an Oscar. <laughs> so are they, did they, are they, is everyone aware that they called it 20 years ago? Oh yeah, yeah, and I mean it's our 20 year reunion, so the 20 year reunion's kind of uh, building around a watch party for the Oscars it seems, <laughs> which is really sweet. The initial plan was to have it in our old high school theater, um, but Kind of reached capacity, didn't weren't, weren't really enough <laughs> seats in our old theater. But so. you you're not going to be able to go to your 20th reunion now because you're going to be at the Oscars. Yeah, I'll wave to everybody from stage, I guess. That's nice. <laughs> well, it's Valentine's Day, so let's talk about the love story of Molly and Ernest Burkhardt because yeah. it's an unusual love story, but they do appear, for all the betrayal and how dark the story is, there does appear to be love there. But how would you describe that relationship based upon what you know of the character and what your research is? Because it's incredibly complex. Yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's a little twofold in that, one, it's true to the history as Osage were telling us, particularly Margie Burkhart, Molly's granddaughter, who I got to meet, and I could just see that's where Gran probably drew a lot of inspiration in how he etched Molly out in the book. But Margie... Marty had gone to a meeting with 250 Osage members present there from Gray Horse District, where Molly was from, and Margie got up and said, you have to remember these two were in love. Um, Ernest insisted until the day he died that he loved that woman, that she was a good one, as he would say. Um, there, was a, there was a legacy in the kids. People remember their kids as being very fun-loving and being close to each other. And even after Ernest had gotten out of prison, 
His son, Cowboy, would go pick him up and drive around with him, gave him the nickname Old Dynamite, but still had a relationship with his father. Old Dynamite because he used dynamite because to blow the, up the yeah. houses of the people who were standing yep, up to because the... because of because of his guilt and complicity with blowing up his aunt's house, Rita's house. So it's it's it doesn't make sense, yet it is. You know, there was real love in this family. These kids had what we can assume was a happy home life because they grew into very fun, loving people who loved each other a lot. Um, so there was that element. And then in our first meeting, the first time that I Zoomed with Leo and Marty talking about some of these script changes, it very much occurred to me that this love story can serve as a greater analogy for the bigger betrayal here of colonization of indigenous people, of the amount of trust that, you know, on tribal parts in these trust relationships and these treaty relationships we've entered into that haven't been honored, that have been like systemically over time just betrayed our, our, our own sovereignty being eroded. And I could see that like, oh, this love story serves as a nice little microcosm for that larger conversation. Um, is it true, and if true, I love this, that during the, you know, the COVID lockdowns of 2020, you applied for a job at the Department of Agriculture? I was in the process of um, registering for a data analytics course so I could get paid for it. Could have volunteered for uh, citizen science, of course, but I, I was staying in a county south of where uh, the giant Asian hornet, where the murder hornets had settled in. And they have like a protective, almost maternal love of bees, particularly bumblebees. So it just felt like kind of a purpose, a <laughs> calling maybe, to- um, Here is, this is you yeah. with, your, with your beloved bees right there. <laughs> and those are honeybees, that's in Osage those, County. Okay, what do you love about bees? Oh, so much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I put honey in everything. Uh, it's my it's my go-to for every little like rash or cut. It's just honey. Um, there's a. It kind of traces back to 2018. It was settling into winter. It was right before I shot first Cal with Kelly Riker. It was in another sort of like pause in my career and looking for purpose and. I was bringing my dog back from a walk and she just fixated on this little buzz and like the succulents in front of our house. And it was a bee. She tends to eat bees, so I just scooped it up so she wouldn't get stung. And it was a little little chunky bu bumblebee, a tri-belted, tri um, tri-colored tri-belted bumblebee, which is an indigenous species. And I moved him to the back porch and two days later he was still there, like looking inside like he was wanting to come in. I think maybe he'd found a heat vent, but he was just sitting there, just looking inside. So I brought him in, I made a little mixture of honey and water and just kept him going for another few weeks and learned about his species. They're, they're, they've got an incredible genome. They die you off every year. You had year. a pet they, bee? I had a pet bee. <laughs> Beelzebub. You live a rich and interesting life. Well, he Lily, thank you so much for being here. It was lovely thank to you, meet you. Steven. Killers of the Flower Moon is now streaming globally on Apple TV+. Lily Gladstone, everybody. We'll be right back.